Welcome to Embroidery and Towels with Kay Hickman. Embroidery and towels just seem to go together. A touch of embroidery on a towel can liven up a bathroom. Monogramming a towel can personalize a gift that will be loved for years by the recipient. There are a few things that we need to consider when embroidering on a towel. Whether you're stitching a large letter from the Bernina exclusive collection Loop de Loop, or using the monogram features in Software 7, or stitching a design onto a towel that is certain to, be, to bring your decor to a whole new level. The first thing to consider is what stabilizer should be used on the back during the embroidery process. There are basically three basic types of stabilizer, cut away, tear away, and wash away. You will find many, many differing opinions about which one of these stabilizers should be used on a towel. A cutaway stabilizer is one that's going to support the most stitches, so if your design is very stitch intensive, you would want to choose a heavyweight cutaway. When the embroidery is done, you're going to cut away the excess stabilizer. That stabilizer will remain on the back of that towel, though, throughout the lifetime of the towel. If you wish for all traces of the stabilizer to be gone, then you will need to use a heavy, water-soluble stabilizer, such as Batchmaster or Aquamesh. But the water-soluble stabilizers do not support as many stitches. My favorite st stabilizer to use is a tearaway stabilizer. It's kind of the best of both worlds between a cutaway and a washaway, in that you can tear away at least most of the stabilizer from the back side, and it also supports a great deal more stitches than a washaway stabilizer does. My two favorite stabilizers to use for this are Ultra Clean and Tear or Heavyweight Tearaway Stabilizer. A must, though, no matter what stabilizer you choose to use on the back, is to use a topping over the top. Aquafilm is a water soluble. Aquafilm is. It's a water-soluble stabilizer. Its sole purpose in life is to keep the nap or the loops of the towel from popping up between the stitches. If you have not used this before, you're going to find a drastic difference in the appearance of your stitch out if you use the Aquafilm topping on a towel. So let's work on the towel today. We're going to work on the side that is opposite the tags so the tags don't interfere with anything. We'll need to mark the vertical center for the for the design, and then we'll want to mark the horizontal center. There are lots of rules about how far up this should be, how far from the side, whether it has a band or a not band. So look on the internet and you're going to find lots and lots of information about positioning. I positioned this one where the design was about two inches. The bottom of the design is about two inches up from the top of the hem. You're going to remove the paper template and then extend the lines. This will be the design placement. I chose to use Ultra Clean and Tear and I nearly always use two layers of Ultra Clean and Tear when I hoop a towel. You'll adhere the layers first together with a little bit of temporary adhesive spray and then you're going to spray the top with just a bit of additional temporary adhesive spray. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to kind of hold it in place. The towel is now positioned on a flat surface with the wrong side up, and you will carefully smooth this stabilizer over the top to attach it to the wrong side in the area to be embroidered. Now we'll audition the hoop. When we're working from the right side, we're lining the template with the, the crosshairs on the template with the marked lines on the towel. As you see here, this hoop is not in a very good position for embroidering. The first reason is because down at the bottom you'll notice the hoop extending past the hem. This hem is very bulky and trying to hoop it this way would not get a good secure hooping with this. You could move the design up, but then the hem would still interfere quite a ways up. The other reason is not quite as obvious, but that is that if you were to hoop this way, the bulk of that towel is going to be to the back side of the hoop when it's attached to the machine. If we rotate the hoop and position it so that the long side of the hoop is parallel to the hem, then we'll find that this is going to fit much better. And I'm actually going to hoop the towel between the two rings of the, of the hoop. 
So we have still lined up the horizontal and vertical lines of the template with those on the fabric. And we can see that it will easily be hooped. The bracket is going to be here at the top as you're looking at it here. But when you attach this to the machine, the bulk of the fabric will be over the bracket or to the left. Now we'll prepare the outer ring. You'll loosen the screw significantly. The more you unscrew the screw, the easier it's going to be to get the towel between the two rings. And you can loosen it almost until the very end. So just we don't want the little nut that's in the end of the screw to, to fall out and get lost. Now place that ring on a non-slip surface. And then we will prepare the towel itself to be picked up. Now an optional thing, but it is helpful, is to place double-sided sticky tape or a basting tape on the wrong side of the inner hoop. As you see it here, place them on the left and the right and the top and the bottom. This is so that when we position that inner ring over the, the towel, that tape is going to also adhere that hoop to the tape and it'll be easier to pick up. So if you've used the tape, you'll want to press down a little bit so that the tape becomes adhered to the towel and press at the sides and at the top and the bottom. Now you're going to pick up the towel. You will gather up the sides of the towel in your hands with your thumbs on the inner part of the hoop. And this is where that tape at the top and the bottom will make it easier to move the towel and put it into position inside the outer ring, which is also sitting on a flat surface. Use the heel of your hand to help to position that inner ring so it sets flush with the outer ring on the surface. You want to check for wrinkles. Make sure there are none inside the, the, the hoop. And then you'll slide the hoop over to the side and tighten up the screw. As much as you loosened it earlier, you're going to need to tighten it that much again now. You'll want it to get it to where the compression between the outer ring and the inner ring is very, very tight because that's what will hold the towel secure as the towel is being embroidered. Placing your, your fingers of your hand right inside the hoop will keep that bubble from forming that we sometimes see when we hoop. Now push the inner ring down ever so slightly. You want to see just a little bit of that inner ring below the outer part of the hoop. This does two things. It tightens the towel just a little bit, and it also keeps the outer ring from rubbing against the, the bed of the sewing machine. Now here is the important top for towels. It's the Aquafilm topping. It's placed over the top of the towel, but it doesn't need to be hooped but it does need to be secured to the towel. Painter's tape is really good for this purpose, so keep some in your sewing room to use just for this. Now we're going to attach the hoop, and the bulk of the towel is over to the left. But we need to check the design direction. We turn the hoop. If we stitch the design as it, is, as it comes into the machine, it's not going to be the direction. So we need to rotate the design so that the top of this B, in this case, is to the left or the top of the towel. Now you're going to use your machine's center needle position, and you're going to position it so that it is directly over the marked lines on the towel. If your center needle position and these marked lines don't line up precisely, then you can use your machine's move features to move that so that it does set directly over the crosshairs. Here's another thing that was very helpful with towels, and that is a basting box. A basting box is a stitch line that secures the stabilizer and the fabric together. It is particularly useful to use a basting box when you're using a topping. Even though we taped the aquafilm in place, there's still a chance that that foot could get caught if the topping becomes loosened. On the Bernina 5 series, 7 series, and 8 series machines, they have built-in basting boxes that you can choose from. You can choose either to baste around just the design itself, which is what we're going to do today, or you can baste around the perimeter of the hoop. If your machine does not have built-in basting box, then go to Bernina.com, 
and download hoop basting outlines for your particular machine for your particular hoop. And then you will have the design the hoop basting boxes for each one of your hoops. If your machine has this ability, as you're stitching this basting box, slow down as far as you can. You can always speed up. And then the other thing is if you're able to use your foot control, then use the foot control, not the start stop button, to stitch this basting box. The foot control gives you total control because when you raise the foot, the machine stops immediately. There's no trying to hit the start stop button when you get a little agitated. Just raise your foot and it stops. You're going to use wooden steers, skewers, or chopsticks instead of your fingers for obvious reasons. And as you're basting around the box, if you see that the topping is becoming distorted or twisted, then all you have to do is raise your foot and then realign that topping and keep on going. Now you just finish the design. You continue it until it is completely through. Before removing the towel from the hoop, this is a good time to flip it over to the back side and trim any little thread tails. And then this basting box is easiest removed if you clip every, oh, maybe three stitches, clip with a little pair of snips all the way around the outside edge. Now flip it back to the right side, and you're going to remove the tape. And then you're going to just pull on that thread. That's the basting box that you see in my fingers here. Because we've snipped it every three inches on the back, it's just going to pull right off very, very easily. It is also easier to remove the topping before you remove the fabric from the hoop. Use your fingernails to support the stitches as you carefully tear away as much of the stabilizer as you can. There are going to be tiny little pieces that are very, very hard to get to, and you'll probably pull a loop trying to get the aquafilm off here. I'm going to show you a way to get rid of that, though, a little bit in later. Now you remove the towel from the hoop, and now you can tear off the stabilizer. Tear away one layer at a time until you have removed the easy part. No need to remove in between the letters of the B. Now all we need to do is remove the center markings to get rid of our blue marks, and then those little bitty places that we couldn't get rid of the aquafilm before, here's the trick for removing that. Place the towel right side up, and then get a paper towel, wet it, wring out the excess, and then place that over your design. Place the iron on top, put it down, lift it up, and then lift up the paper towel. Most of those little bits of the, stable, of the aquafilm topping are going to adhere to the back side of that, of that paper towel. Reposition the towel to a clean spot and then just repeat the process until it is all done. So now you can enjoy the towel. But we'll talk about one more thing because there are some times that our towels are just too thick to get between the inner ring and the outer ring. So here's the alternative to that. This is what we call hoopless embroidery, which is actually a misnomer because you have to use the hoop. What we will do, though, is to just hoop the stabilizer by itself. Then you're going to use the template, place that inside the inner ring, and then you're going to mark a point at the center, the left, the right, the top, and the bottom, and then connect the lines after you remove the template. Now you're going to spray that hoop stabilizer with temporary spray adhesive. So as you see here, you need to protect your hoop, so use a little uh, manila folder with the, with the hole cut out of it, or you can use a commercially commercial product to keep the spray away from your hoop. If you are using a pressure-sensitive paperback to adhesive stabilizer, this sometimes will work, work well, but you do need to test your, your particular towel first to make sure that when you adhere it to this sticky stuff, sometimes the sticky stuff is so sticky that when you remove the stabilizer, it will pull towels, the loops on the back side of the towel. So once we have the, the the stabilizer prepared. Now we're going to place the marks on the hoop with those on top of the sprayed and the hoop stabilizer. Use your fingers to press down firmly so that the towel is completely adhered to the stabilizer on the back side. 
Just as we did before, we're still going to do the same type of thing. We're still going to use the Aquafilm topping, tape it in place, and then you're going to attach that to the machine. The bulk is to the left. And this is where I, I feel it is very important that you use either a design basting box or a hoop basting box, because that's going to give a little bit more security to stitch this towel to the stabilizer, because you don't want the weight of that stabilizer to pull away and distort your design. So that's hooping for the best possible embroidery, so we hope you enjoy your hooping. <laughs>